Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win Lose Gaming. After some interesting character design choices, I figured now is a great time to talk about 7 ideas for buffing Dea. So the current state of Dea is quite perplexing to say the least. It's been quite a long time where a character has almost little to no value upon their release. And tragically, our Aramite Queen is languishing in a state of limbo. However, as we have seen with many characters like Kokomi, Kuki, and Toma, Mihoyu has proven that they had the foresight to have these become invaluable additions to our rosters. So that leads me to today's discussion of Future Impact. Future Impact is essentially playing an unfinished character today in hopes that they will become much better in the future. Toma and Kuki were both released prior to Dendro, and it's clear that their kits ended up working amazingly well with Dendro. At the time they were released, they both had basically nothing that they were best at. But with the release of Dendro, they are now two of the best free-to-play friendly characters for Burgeon and Hyper Bloom respectively. And this isn't only for four-star characters, but Kokomi has grown into an incredible character since her release with her now excelling on Freeze, Dendro, and even Mono Hydro teams. There's also a lot of foreshadowing in Genshin Impact. The game was released with both Monstat and Li Yue, and Electro was always the odd one out, without a good main DPS, sorry Kaching, and with a resonance that seemed pretty mediocre. However, knowing that the next region was Inazuma, land of the Electro Archon, it was expected that there would be an energy recharge meta thanks to Electro Resonance being focused on energy recharge. And of course, the Riding Shogun came out and dominated the meta. Then Sumeru was the land of the Dendro Archon. And then surprisingly, now the free-to-play meta is all about Dendro core-related reactions. Fontaine, the next region of the Hydro Archon, appears to be foreshadowing an HP% percent focus meta with many more HP scaling characters and with Hydro Resonance. Perhaps HP scaling will be the focus, or funnily enough, survival could be the focus. We often forget about how HP actually helps us survive longer, and is not just an offensive stat for certain characters. Anyway, all this leads me to speculate some potential bust for Dea. Here are a few key criteria to consider though. Mihoyo almost never directly rebalances a character's kit post-release. Zhongli is essentially the only exception to this, so we will not be buffing Dea's kit directly. If we did, then this video would be too simple as we can just double Dea's damage. The next criteria is the goal of any proposed buff to Dea is hopefully going to buff some other underperforming characters as well. Sure, we can release Dun Yarzad, which inspires Dea to do 300% more damage, while also giving you a bunch of Mora, but that's both lazy and way too specific to Dea. And as an added bonus, it'd be great to introduce a new mechanic or playstyle that complements Dea as well, but this is just an added bonus and not the focus of the proposed buff. So without further ado, let's shotgun some ideas for buffing Dea. <laughs> One idea I had could be a character that stores burst damage dealt by the on-field character and then unleashes it in a massive blast, but we need to put a lot of restrictions in order to have it benefit Dia more so than others. For example, if we put a damage cap on each hit absorbable, then we won't buff characters like Hu Tao to the moon. And we can also set that cap to pretty close to Dia's burst damage numbers. Another limitation would be to have a stack gainable only once every 0.3 seconds. This means that every single hit from Dea's burst is able to gain a stack, while other fast tick rate bursts like Ayaka's, Yalan's, Xingqiu's, and even Amber, while still good with this ability, would not be as broken as they otherwise would be. If this ability also only works for the on-field character, this would not buff characters like Xingqiu or Yalan or Xiangling to the moon and instead perhaps give them the option to stay on field to actually maximally benefit this ability. And finally, the absorption window would only last for 8 seconds or so, allowing Dea to unload all the hits in her burst. Anyway, these restrictions would actually allow Dea to be an optimal teammate for such a mechanic while still probably being useful in other teams as well. And to synergize even better with Dea, this this new character could be Hydro or Pyro, allowing them to perform a huge vape or melt after Dea is finished doing her stuff. The next idea is kind of a new mechanic. 
Since Dea's attacks during her elemental burst don't count as normal attacks, they don't activate Xingqiu or Yelan's elemental bursts. So what do they count as? Perhaps each punch is basically an elemental burst activation. A character that works similarly to Xingqiu or Yelan but activates on elemental burst activation could be great here. Each punch would count as a burst activation, thus activating this character's ability up to 10 times in comparison to most other characters, only activating it once or so when they use their burst. Xingqiu and Yelan's burst Bursts wouldn't work with this since they are not activating their bursts per se, but the normal attack of the on-field character activates them. Another character that can benefit from this mechanic is Klee, as each wave of Sparks and Splash could also count as a burst attack. It'd be great to see something like this buff to underperforming Pyre characters, and perhaps many future characters as well with multiple quote-unquote burst activations. Now a less interesting but mathematically good buff for Dea is an HP and attack dual scaling buffer. If a character outputs any sort of HP and attack dual scaling, perhaps this buffer can buff the overlapping portion between the multiple scalings. This would be a great buff for Dea's damage, especially at Constellation 1, since she scales very similarly off both attack and HP. This type of buff would also be great for other characters like Ayato and Zhongli, and perhaps future dual HP attack scaling characters. This doesn't actually buff characters like Hu Tao, since she converts her HP into attack, and this also doesn't buff already great characters like Yelan and Kokomi, since they scale entirely off of their HP. Sadly, I think this idea is a bit convoluted to write a description for the layman player, but sometimes all we need is basically a Kujo Sara, but for this instead. <laughs> So a much more straightforward buff than the last one is an HP Bennett, that Bennett fits the on-field character the most. Now of course this would mainly be designed for a Constellation 1 Dea, but since she's going to be on the standard banner there is a good chance you'll get her Constellation 1 after some time. It'd also be great if this character provided for example a crit damage multiplier bonus to just the HP scaling portion of the character's damage output, otherwise this would be a colossal buff to Hu Tao who doesn't need it. Now the lack of snapshotting for Yelan would make it less broken on her, although this might actually make an on-field Yelan even more enticing than it already was. Anyway, an HP buffing Bennett could help a Constellation 1 Dea significantly, but I fear this will buff already great HP focused characters a bit too much. Idea number 5 is a character that provides fast ramp up time for burst damage. For example, after the buffed character uses their elemental burst, they gain 15% burst damage every 0.5 seconds for 3 seconds. This is similar to Yelan's buff, but much faster and much more specific. The specificity of this buff is to avoid buffing all of the other snapshotting bursts, like Xiang Ling's or Aika's, and instead buff non-snapshotting on-field bursts like Dea's or even Yao Yao's or an on-field Chingcho or Yelan's. Now another idea would be to allow your team to somehow do more damage based on your team taking damage. Normally taking damage is annoying as it launches you everywhere, however if a character provided massive buffs and rewarded you for taking damage, you would actually bypass shields and perhaps even choose Dea's ability to add super armor over a shield. This could be what Dea needs to improve her value as both a support character and potentially a DPS character in this situation. An alternative to this idea is to implement some kind of reflection mechanic, where if your on-field character takes damage, you'll unleash a shockwave or something. This can make Dea's gradual damage over time, as well as Xiao's self-inflicted damage, to be invaluable for activating such a damage-type shockwave. Another option to buff her utility and perhaps damage output are some buffs that require you not to have a shield, like the passive or her signature weapon, the Beacon of the Reed Sea. This would make Dea the premier way to obtain hyper armor, and depending on the content this could be quite valuable. Sadly though, this alone probably isn't enough to make Dea the best choice, because of course you can always just play without a shield and dodge stuff, but it can help improve her usability. So there were my 7 ideas to buff our downtrodden upcoming standard banner character Dea. It's also worth noting that an upcoming character can have a combination of these ideas to buff Dia. I'd love to hear your ideas for buffing Dia down in the comments below. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos ranging from Caesar showcases, DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash the subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work.
Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.